Hey folks, David Molnar here. Welcome to the Your Photography, the Your Photography Mentor Podcast. Tongue twist, twist, <laughs> tongue twister, tongue twister, tongue twister. Yeah. Every single time I try to say it. Um, welcome, Rich Coleman, my co-host. Hello. Today. How, how you doing today, sir? Co-host today. Wow. Should I, am I on the chopping block? The I've been your block. co-host for all nineteen, but woo, woo. Yeah, all, all nineteen. You say all COVID nineteen? Wait, which way yeah. is it? Ooh. It's going that way. That's all backwards. Um, I heard you no, can go man. both ways. All 19 episodes. That's what you meant. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, Rich. Oh, Rich. David, let's. I'm uh, gonna start with the big three because I know you forgot about it. Well, I have a question for you though. Do you do you know how oh. much it costs for a slice of pie in Antigua? No. It's two dollars and fifty cents. The crazy thing is, it costs three dollars in Jamaica. In fact, those are the pie rates of the Caribbean. Hmm. Mm. Pie rates of the no. Caribbean. Get it? I, th- I was yeah. looking for like a three point one four. I was like, oh, it costs three fourteen, five six seven mm. two one eight. That that would that would be a good addition to the joke, but you know, I just I thought I'd walk the plank first. So, anyways, are um, are you are you yeah. serious? <laughs> that joke never sailed. Let's just be. All honest. right, we're just hey, we're gonna we're winging this right here. The big yeah. the big three. You ready? Mm-hmm. Big three things from the last week. Um, so my beautiful. My bold, my 2015 MacBook, uh, the space bar, the left shift bar, and the E button stopped working. Mm. Three, three things you never use on a MacBook. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so like the E, if I hit E once, it would just say E, like for infinity, it would just say E for like ever. So I called Apple, explained to them that I lived like two hours from a store, I found a protection plan or like a extended warranty, like they'll fix it for free. And then they wanted to charge me $650 to fix it. So I said, hard pass, Hmm. gave up for the day. Then I called back the next day, got a beautiful man named Jacob. He was like, oh yeah, send it in, we'll fix it for free. So like just because I got the right customer service person, I get a, a, they're doing $650 worth of free work to this 2015 computer that's my amazing Apple wow. news. Wow, dude, that's amazing. I, I've had that. I've had that happen before as well at the Apple Store, where uh, there's times where I'm like, hey, you know, I forget what it was, but there's a couple, like I think two or three different scenarios where I talk to a different customer service rec and rep, and they're like, yeah, we'll fix that for free. And I'm like, man, it's amazing. Um, like it just it just depends on who like you're dealing with that day, mm-hmm. or like their mood or how they're feeling, because it doesn't cost yeah. them anything to fix my computer for free. Come on. Cost them a li- like you know some stuff. Cost them some. Well, not that not that actual person, not the not the person on the phone. That's right. But you know they have they have uh, you know they have their guidelines they're supposed to follow and all that stuff. Any other? It was that that was one of the three. Anything else? That was one. Now you now you do two and I'll do three. Okay, so we're not doing three each. So confused. Yeah, because I doubt <laughs> I doubt you can figure three out. I'm just trying to wing it. Uh, okay, so this weekend, um, me and. The bullet, what happened? Oh, I got a new car. I got a, I, mm. so I had, um, I had a 2012, uh, BMW X5 is what I've had for the last three years. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's funny. It's like <laughs> whenever I got the BMW, everyone, like a bunch of my friends were like, D- just remember with, when you have a BMW, you don't have to use blinkers anymore, you know? <laughs> Cause I guess the, the traditional BMW drivers are jerks. Um, I tried it out. So I have had Toyota Foreigners uh, starting when I was 20 years old. And then I had that one for six or seven years, got another one, got another one. And because I, you know, two of them got wrecked. And the last one I got was kind of a lemon. It was rusted underneath. I bought it really quick. One of them smelled bad. Did one of them smell bad? Am I remembering that correctly? Mm, maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe the one <laughs> I took to Mexico for two months smelled bad afterwards. I don't know. Yeah, we, maybe. Like, it, it had all the mildew in there from, you know, surfing and catching lobsters and stuff. Yes, the one, the, that one. Yeah, anyways. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah. Long story short, when I needed to get a new Forerunner, when I needed to get a fourth Forerunner um, three years ago, I was looking and the price for a BMW was half the price of a Toyota Forerunner. I guess they just hold their value like crazy. So I remember thinking, gosh, man, a BMW is something I never thought I would be able to afford, but it was literally half the price of a four, of the same year for a Forerunner. Um, and I buy used cars, so I'm not gonna buy a brand new car. Um, at least Amen. that's no, so, so far. Um, Dave Ramsey, there you go. 
Um, but uh, so yeah, I bought a BMW, and I it just it just never felt like me. It was fun, but never felt like me. A couple days ago, you know, since I moved back to the beach a little less than a year ago, I got a new Forerunner, not a new Forerunner, new to me Forerunner. It was a 2019, um, and uh, with 16,000 miles on it. So it's it's definitely the newest car I've ever had. But it's a silver Forerunner, and it's just you know I just I'm a Toyota guy. I'm like a Toyota uh, sandy car. I need I just need a golden retriever, you know. Mm. With my kids. Good luck. It's like, Good luck yeah. with Tammy in that way. Yeah, there, exactly. There'd be a lot less food on the ground with a golden retriever. There would be. There would be. Yeah, we probably should do that. We'd be golden if we could just do that. Boom. Um, but uh, anyway. Okay, what's number, what's, number, what's number three for me is I actually just texted your wife. I know that mm. sounds funny, but mm. I texted a picture of me and Rosie playing the memory game. So my big three is that I miss playing the memory princess game oh. with, with Rosie. Rosie, yeah. Rich, Rich would wake up and Rosie, who's my second... Well, youngest. one of my, no, she, yeah, my second youngest. I was like, well, there she's, we go, the yeah. old, she's my oldest daughter. I'm like, she's actually my third child. Like, how can I, how can I correct this? Thank you. Thank you for coming to your rescue. Rosie, Rosie is the boss. And every morning she'd be like, Rich, play the princess matching game with me. And Rich was like, okay, like, no coffee yet. You're and then four gracious. hours later, David would wake up. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> um, awesome, man. Well, what are we going to talk about today? What are we giving well, away today? What are we giving? We haven't talked about that. I actually, to show you how we operate, as the intro reel was praying, I was like, what are we giving away? And he was like, I can't hear you. The music's too loud. So today, based on what we're talking about, we're going to give away David's favorite hard drive, a five terabyte Seagate hard drive. I don't know if I can pull this in the frame since it's still plugged in, but it's right here. It's awesome. Imagine <laughs> it being awesome. You know? Imagine. Well, here, this isn't Seagate, but I'm at, I pretend, pretend it is. Yeah, um, we won't talk about that, our differentiations between Seagate and Western Digital. But mm -hmm. today, we are going to talk about, like, this. the last couple of weeks, we've been kind of building up to how we've started our business, like how we grew our business. Today, we're going to talk about some real things that have happened to us and maybe, like, some of the biggest mistakes that we, David and I, have made. Yeah on this thing called business. And uh, mm -hmm. it's not something that you hear a lot of people talk about their mistakes because they're embarrassed. Mm. But if my goal is to teach you guys something and let you learn from one of my mistakes, I'm all in. I'll tell you everything I did wrong so that you don't have to do the amount of crying I did starting my business. Mm. Love it. We should do a couple of like rapid fire mistakes really quick. What do you think? Like what? what's one for you? Like it doesn't have to be a long story. Okay, boom. What's, what's... Uh, uh, not, not bringing extra pants to a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to expound on that one, but, um, what, what, uh, real, real quick. So one of you guys who shares this Facebook live right now is going to win that hard drive, right? So we're going to be giving away that hard drive. One of you guys who shares this Facebook live is going to win that. Um, cause we're recording this podcast live. Um, by the way, you guys are commenting on my hair. Um, mm, ouch, sorry. Man. Yeah, I know. They're like, they're like, they notice when my hair is not pushed up and prim and proper. Listen, I have this new thing. I'm just trying to jump in the, so I ride my bike to work. Okay. And I'm just trying to jump in the ocean and swim for a few minutes and get that salt air and take some deep breaths because I probably like dealt with screaming kids already in the morning. I'm trying to like channel my inner chi. All right. Before I get to the office and then, you know, and, and, and it's like, you know, I'm like, I'm enjoying the freedom of like not having to like try to do my hair each morning. So I'm just pushing to the you side. You look great. You look so, great. It's getting which, blonder. Which way is, it, is it going this? Which way is it going? It's like, it's the it's backwards fine. in the screen. It's, there it's we go. good. It's great. The Are you guys okay with it. that? Are y'all okay with that? If I just like push the hair to the side sometimes and don't like blow dry They might it like it, it if you went topless like you do for me. Every time me yeah. and David, David sent me an hour and a half video of him topless the other day. True? Is that <laughs> true or false? It was like an hour and like 33 minutes. This is true. <laughs> uh, critiquing some stuff. Like we, it was a conversation, a video we need to, I need to be like, Rich, you know, like I really don't like the color black on your shirts. Like you really need to switch it to gray. Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, no, no, no. I was giving him some feedback on a video that he had made and I was like talking about it in real time. And I did the whole thing topless because I had just gotten off my bike and I was sweaty. So anyways, mm. um, yeah. Carol, thank you. Carol says your hair looks great. Thanks so much. I appreciate Thanks. that. You should, that, should, that needs to be highlighted. Highlight that. Give that a shout out. Carol there you go, Carol. Favorite. Carol said my, so anyways, just, just, you know, if my hair is like this, that means I jumped in the ocean a couple hours ago and then I came into work and, uh, and stuff. So there you go. Zena says the same thing. Sandra, Sandra is saying your hair is fine. You know, like whenever Ooh. a girl says it's fine, 
Like whenever I ask my wife, like how, freaked how out, f- insecure, neurotic, and emotional. <laughs> so my hair is is neurotic and emotional. Um, yeah, whenever I ask my wife, like, hey, how are you doing? I'm fine. Is she fine? Ooh. Yeah. I mean, she, I mean, she looks fine to me. So, I would say so Tammy's fine. fine. So fine. <laughs> hey, it's my wife. Um, but I saw that paddleboarding post. If she says she's fine, she, that ain't that ain't true. Okay. Um, so what's so you you went you forgot to bring extra pants to a wedding? Do you want to expound or is that the quick? Yeah. Story? So like I was at a wedding, and this is cool because you you surf there, Kitty Hawk Pier. Mm-hmm. I was at Kitty Hawk Pier, and luckily. The bride was getting ready in the hotel, and I was starting to shoot details. Tom and I were shooting details, and there was like a string like right at my knee or like above my knee, like on my inner thigh, like a little – like oh, a piece a of my string. pants. Okay, gotcha. A loose gotcha. string. So I pull it, and the pants split all the way from my crotch to my ankle <laughs> completely. And I looked at Tom, and I was like, Tom, I'm going to run completely pantless to Walmart, buy every pair of black pants I can find. You just pretend like I'm still here. And luckily <laughs> – I bought four pair of pants. One of them fit, and I not like the bride didn't know anything that oh, happened. Dude. But right now, if you go in my car where the tire is, there's a there's black pants, black shirt, extra camera strap, extra iPhone charger in the tire compartment. Oh, <clears throat> that's smart. Yeah, you know, I, I was just thinking about this morning. I like this shirt is was pretty wrinkly because you know I have like thirty or forty of these exact same shirts. I was thinking I was keeping an extra shirt or two folded in here in case like one's like super dirty and I, I'm out right now. So I need to I need to write. I'm gonna write that down on my to do list right now. Um, okay, so so when I shot and I can't remember if I've ever told y'all this in the podcast, but so Biff Jennings owns a company called Shooters at the Beach in Kitty Hawk slash Kittleville Hills, Nags Head. I don't know where his office is right Nags now. Nags Head. He's Na- Nags Head line-ish. They're back into Nags Head because they were – anyways. They're um, on Gallery Row. He's a great guy. Okay. I love, I Biff. love Biff. Biff yeah. is awesome. Um, and Aaron. Aaron is his son. Aaron Jennings is awesome as well. Um, so check him out. Shooters at the Beach. I think it's shootersatthebeach.com, right? Um, Dot com. Anyways, I, I worked for Biff and Aaron uh, for a summer. And it was awesome, an invaluable experience. It was kind of, I mean, it wasn't a real job because like we only worked a couple hours a day. Like I would do a photo shoot at 9 a.m. and a photo shoot at like 6 p.m. So it wasn't like I had to like go to the office and put my tie on and stuff. But um, but it was awesome and I learned a lot from Biff. He was definitely one of my earlier mentors. Um, he would tell me like he just had a way with like, you know, when you're a photographer, you learn how to recycle jokes. You learn what jokes work. Like for instance, I would, you know, when I was shooting brides, I may have told you all this before, but when I was shooting brides, I'd like walk in the room and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I'd see the dress like hanging up on the wall or see the bride in her, bride in her dress. And I'd be like, that dress looks so beautiful. Like, do you think that would work on me? You mind if I borrow that later? You know, and like, for whatever reason, like the bridesmaids and the bride, like I'd always pull it off and like my wife was like, oh my God, I've heard that joke like a hundred times. But um, it works. You figure out what works for you and you do it. Well, Biff was telling me what works for him and I must have misquoted it because he was saying, <laughs> Hey, when you're, when you're, because I was like, you know, like whenever you try to mimic someone else, like, like my joke may not work. And, um, and, uh, Biff would, Biff told me, he was like, when you're positioning women, and I'm not sure exactly, he must have just said it in a lighter tone, I'm not really sure. But he goes, hey, uh, w- when you're positioning women, you should, I'm gonna stand up here, uh, my board charts are still a little bit wet, you know, literally. Um, but he's like, hey, don't like scrunch your, uh, he's like, don't don't have them like scrunch your, your, um, your knees like this because it'll make their legs look fat. So he wasn't saying tell them that. He was saying what you should do is like have them sit like this and then so like, I can't really demonstrate it right here on the podcast, but he was like, have "There's a sofa behind you. I need you to. I need you to demonstrate it on the sofa <laughs> yeah. behind you." So he, he's like, he's like, go, he like spread out, you know, like have the have the legs go like this. He's like, and say so they look nice and long and thin, or or extra long and thin, or something like that. I, he, that's probably what he said. He said so they look extra long and thin type thing. He probably said that, and then I was saying it for the first time, trying it out on a real client of his that I was, you know, because he would hire me to do beach family photo shoots. And I was like, hey, I was like, so put your legs like this so they look long and thin. <laughs> and, uh, and I just like, I, 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 and, then, and then they were like the whole family, the fo- like they're probably from <gasps> New York. They're probably from New York or something. And like, no offense hey. to New Yorkers, but they were like, they like, cause they were up, you know, like Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, that's like people that come down to the Outer Banks. And they were just like, 
you know, whatever. And then the father looked at me and he was like, because we were having a great time before that. Like, we were cracking up, like, whatever. And he was like, that was cold. How dare you? And I was like, I, I, I was... I was just trying to recycle a joke. Like, I didn't mean that she looked fat. Like, it, it played off so bad. Um, mm. But I learned to try to, like, position things in a, in a light way and never in a deprecating way towards someone else. Because probably Biff had said that distinguishing word. I don't know. We could ask him. But he probably said, so they look extra long and thin. Because then that just feels yeah. nice. Like, oh, you're already thin. Now let's make them look make extra it, long it'll look, and thin. Yeah, you look thinner. Yeah, you look great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this, yeah. this is like, you know. And hey, can just, you move your leg? You look fat. That's probably how you said yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's, I didn't say that, but that's what it came out <laughs> as. And I'm like, oh. You know, so in the posing course, we talk about CRE, the core posing method. And we talk about how to always encourage your clients to correct their poses to um, pose in a flattering way. Anyways, that was one of the ones where I was like, oh my God. And I'm that, like, it haunts me to this day because they were really nice people and we were having a good time and I screwed it up. I don't, you did I not get tipped that shoot. I didn't get tipped and they probably didn't buy any of the prints afterwards, which was the goal for Biff. Sorry, Biff. I think I maybe told you this. I can't remember. But um, anyways. All right. Do you have something else for us, Rich? He wants, he wants his money back. Is this like the speed round? Mistakes I've made. Ooh, you know what I used to do? Because again, this is me forgetting to pack something. Like when I was younger in my career, I would push it to the limit. Like some of my friends like get into like this really zen place. You push before boundaries. they go to a I shoot. Don't, I don't understand. Yeah. Like, why would you push? You never do that verbally on the air or anything like that. You never I push do it boundaries. all. I'm a bound. I'm a boundary <laughs> finder, and I usually find it by jumping over it. Uh, oh but what I did is I'd like like my friends will like mentally prepare for a shoot, whether it's a wedding, a beach portrait. They'll like, get in the right headspace. Me, I'm like doing work. I never know what day of the week it is. I just kind of operate the same every day and get yelled at on Sundays yes, for working. Yes, you pinged me yesterday morning. It's Sunday morning. He's like, hey, what do you think about this? Sorry. Sunday? Sunday morning. COVID. I'm hanging with my COVID kids. COVID happened, bro. Get, church is getting ready for. I'm getting ready for church. It's not closed in Florida. We went to church yesterday. Anyways, go ahead. Turn off notifications. But <laughs> I just like, I'll forget what I'm doing and then be like, my, my watch will chirp at me and be like, you have 30 minutes to get to the beach. And I'm like, oh, freak. So I want, like, I would run to the beach and I remember the sinking feeling of forgetting a memory card. Like I'm like about to take my first test shot and it says no card. And I'm like, ah, or like I forget a battery. So also in my car at all times is a battery and a sleeve of memory cards. Like my silver cards that like I don't want to use anymore. Or they're like a little slower. But I always had memory cards in the center console of both of my vehicles. Mm. You should always have a card up your sleeve. That card would have some stinky pictures on it. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> oh, well yes. done. Well done. That was, that was, that was clever. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to throw – no, I'm, probably, I'm not going to say his name. All right, I'm going to throw um, – <laughs> Here, here's a mistake that I had that I made. We, we don't have to do the rapid fire ones anymore. <laughs> Okay, because um, I was getting so nervous about that. There was a very influential person in Nashville. They're on air all the time. And uh, very sh – <laughs> what are you eating, yogurt? It's No, it's my froth. It's I can't froth almond milk correctly, so there's always like – it's left over at the end. Mm -hmm. man. I'm not as good as you. Gosh, uh, I know. Don't gosh, talk man. about it. You're just frothing at the mouth to learn how to, how to make lattes like me. Um, but I never really make them up my office. I probably should try that more. Um, so there's this very influential person. And I'm shooting weddings at the time. And I shot uh, some really good friends of ours. And they referred me to shoot this very influential person's daughter. Okay? Who actually is now a very influential person as well. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so-and-so's daughter. Um, and uh, I'm going to... Yeah. So anyway, so I was like... Barack oh Obama. Like, yeah, Barack Obama lived in Nashville. Um and uh, this is probably during his presidency. I'm trying to think. Probably. I forget. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, I can't do the math. He probably lived in D.C. then. So he, he probably, probably, lived, lived, he probably lived in D.C. then. I don't think he was, I don't think he was in Nashville yeah. at the time. Um, so anyways, we had prices listed on our website. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. There's, there's obviously lots of different strategies there for having prices listed on your, bad, your website. We can talk about that differently. Um, someone had actually asked earlier to talk about pricing and stuff like that. So we could definitely do that. But I had prices listed on my website, and I think I was testing it out. And I think at the time I was um, transitioning from shoot, spending twenty, sorry, get, charging twenty five hundred dollars to shoot a wedding. This is like 
probably 12 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, something like that, to 3,500. We had raised, raised our prices $1,000 to 3,500 dollars. And um, this is a very influential person and this very influential, very influential person's daughter was getting married and they could afford it, whatever, okay? And uh, in but cash. They're, in cash, they're, they're known to be sticklers for getting good deals. Anyways, I, um, I guess I had, and I had changed the prices on the website just to reflect $3,500, but apparently there was like some spot at the bottom of the about page when you scroll down where it still said 2,500. And I just missed it when I had changed the prices on my website. And then she was like, Hey, we're talking, having, you know, talking on the phone before, like a, it was like a pre-meeting, like a get to know you thing. She's like, I see your prices are 2,500. And I was like, Oh no. Um, no, uh, no, actually, they're they're thirty five hundred. And I think she thought that I was just I don't know if she had seen it somewhere else written on my website that actually was thirty five hundred. But I think she thought I was trying to hike up the price just for her, and I wasn't. We had just legitimately a month or two prior had changed our prices to thirty five hundred. Um, and so, anyways, it was one of those things that kind of became like a thing. And they they I think maybe they thought I was trying to hike up the prices on them, and I actually wasn't. Um, so anyways, it's one of those things where if you're going to post your prices, make sure they're consistent all over your website because I got the stink eye from some influential people for the next few years because I think they taught, thought I was trying to like work a work on kind of some one of those deals. And it might have all been in my head, you know, but but I don't pretty know. pretty smart though. I felt, yeah. I felt, I felt kind of like, oh, that mm. guy right there. And I was like, I wasn't mm. trying to do it. I'm innocent. Okay, continue. I'll do it for what? free. Yeah, I, I'll do it for I would, free. I would have shot that wedding for free. Glad. Biggest mistake is shooting friends. No, I'm just kidding. Friends and family, man, they can be the worst. Shooting like, here's what. Here, this isn't even on notes or anything I've thought about, but I will say this: free shoots can be the most headache. And once you start a precedent of shooting for free, like let's say you shoot your friends' engagement pictures for free because you love them, then they expect you to shoot their wedding for free. Then they expect you to shoot the cake smash and the one year birthday party for free. Then the next family photo for free. And then whenever you start charging them, they start to they get mad. They're like, "You've been doing this for free for ten years, and now you're charging me money half price." So that has nothing to do with anything. But if you're gonna do a service, charge something, even if it's fifty bucks. Charge something so that there's a precedent of you making money for work. Because if you don't, if they don't value you in dollar form. They're not going to value you in time form. So your time needs to be worth something. And I will say if you're starting out, you're growing your business, charge something. Even if it's minute, just charge something so that you don't set a precedent of being that cheap free photographer. And I know we've talked about that before. I just want to re-hit that home because they're the worst clients. It's definitely, it's definitely a fine balance though. It's one of those things where um, – Jody Saria said thirty five hundred dollars is not a lot to shoot a wedding, even twelve years. It ago. was twelve years. Yeah, uh, depends. I mean, it's it's not it's a market lot. variant. It wasn't a lot, but there are certainly people charging ten, fifteen. You know, well, the, you know, the last weddings we were shooting were, I think we started at fifteen thousand dollars. So we worked our way up from there. Um, this was just like, an, I think I was in year two of shooting weddings at that point, and I had started at five hundred dollars a wedding in the year 2006. June 24th, 2006 was the first wedding. It was my friend Sarah and Dustin Peed, and I charged them $500. I drove all night to get there. Um, we left Friday night after work, after Tammy's work. We drove all night, got to the hotel at like 3 or 4 a.m., slept for two or three hours, shot a wedding all day, and then came home, and I spent like weeks editing the photos, and I made 500 bucks. And that started my wedding photography career. Hashtag so anyways, worth it. $3,500 felt like a lot to me at the time because I was a 22 year old kid or 20, maybe 23, something like that. Um, but what I was gonna say about shooting people for free, um, that is a really interesting subject. I know we've talked about that a little bit on the, yeah, on the, on the but, podcast whew. episodes. It's, it's, it's a complicated thing, okay? Um, because there are times, let me echo with what, what Rich just said. I 100% agree. When you start shooting someone for free, it's re they're always going to come to expect it. Oh, Rich gives me this deal. Oh, David gives me this deal. Rich was at my house a week and a half ago, and I made him shoot a photo shoot for us for free. Oh, uh, no, I <laughs> invoice you. <laughs> oh, sweet. Okay, you just yeah. we, we just we just dropped fifteen. Grand Speaking of thirty five hundred dollars, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm like sweating. I'm like, let me talk to the accountant. Pause. Push pause. Yeah. Um, just kidding. Um, 
But anyways, um, if people, if you start charging free, meaning charging nothing, and you start shooting people and you do that a few times, they're definitely going to expect that in the future. And I have some, some friends of mine where it just started getting out of hand where they're like, trying to bend over backwards so that I can, I'm like, can you just like, like it didn't work with my schedule and they really wanted me to shoot. And it's like, I feel bad for charging them because they're good friends of ours. And, um, and they've been, you know, I don't mind doing it. It's just life was busy. I'm like, I don't have time to schedule a shoot, much less do a shoot for free for you. And they're like, it's okay. We can wait till next, next week. I'm like, just hire someone this week. Like, I don't want to do it. It becomes a hassle. However, let me, let me add a caveat to that. Let me, let me argue with you for a second, Rich. Okay. I think doing free shoots strategically that have strategic or relate strategic relationship value has built my photography career. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll have times when I would like hook a band up and do a strategic shoot for them so that they could get signed to the record label. And then the record label pays me five to 10 grand to do a photo shoot for them. And they're like, cool now, cause now it's not their money. It's like the Apple, you know, person. It's not their, yeah. it's not their money. It's no longer their money. They could, they have a budget to spend. Right. And then they're like, well, David, like, let's, let's have David do that, you know? Um, and so there is a way, there are ways to be strategic. Does that mean you should give every schmuck out there? No offense. Um, every schmuck out there a free shoot? No, but there are strategic moments in time when you can utilize your talents to a build your portfolio b make a strategic relationship and c really help someone out like there's nothing wrong with being helpful but if you just don't charge anything at all times for all these people in perpetuity then you're going to become that cheap or free photographer that isn't a good thing for building your career what i would do what i would do is i would let people know like like let them know that they are special and they should feel valuable and like man i just really want to hook you up with a shoot you know i typically charge you know five grand for this or whatever but i'm really gonna hook you up don't don't please don't tell your other friends that i'm doing this and then all of a sudden they feel special about it and they're not like like i'll do it for you this time like i'm not you know like i I want to i want to help you blah 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 um then if you set that precedent for i'm doing this strategic free shoot for you Um, don't tell your friends and don't expect this next time, then that can set you up to win. And then maybe you're going to get that photo shoot with when the record label signs the band or, you know, whatever it is. Uh, I mean, I can't tell you how many free shoots I've done that have had tremendous, um, you know, tremendous value. And, um, yeah, so I think there can be really amazing strategic value for that as well. Like the first time I shot your family. No, the first time I shot your family. That was, this is I'm I'm reaping the benefits of that strategic value. This is true. This is true. Yeah. Or uh, I will say anybody that has the pleasure of shooting David Molnar tonight sunset is at eight twenty three because my watch says David would be leaving his house at eight twenty one to get to the beach and do a whole shoot in under ten minutes. True or false? True, but probably yeah, true. probably if it, if the sunset's at eight twenty three then we'd probably arrive like a minute before sunset happens, you know? So yes. it's like, it's like we would have probably left if the beach is, you know, a 10 minute drive, we probably would have left at like eight eleven or eight twelve. got there for like one minute of sunset. And then yeah. one minute that, of good light. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I will, to, to, to echo, to echo realness on what David just said, a big mistake I made starting out was not taking advantages of those networking abilities. If I could preach or teach anything, it's networking. Mm. College was great for me. I didn't learn much, but man, the friends I made kind of boosted my travel wedding photography career. Then the connections I made, I still use for business today. When I first started out taking pictures, I wouldn't give the cake person their pictures. I wouldn't give the flower lady her pictures. I wouldn't give the caterer those pictures because it was just like an extra hassle hassle and headache. I just wouldn't do that. I delivered to the client and that's it. Mm. But I realized, man, if I give these pictures to the florist, they're going to use my pictures online and that's like free advertisement. You cannot put a dollar amount on the value of networking. Mm. I will say that. Yeah. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. Whether it's a record label or a florist or like like Tom. Tom does drywall, my father-in-law. 
And when I was starting my beach portrait company business, I gave him magnets. I spent like 200 bucks on magnets that said like 10% off, book a beach portrait. And he would just throw it on all the refrigerators and Twitty houses. Nice. That's really yeah. great. And, and, it, and it worked. I mean, it was like crazy because I, like I made up a promo code. And when they would email or call me, they'd use that promo code. I knew it was only from the magnet. So it was, it's pretty funny. Oh, so you attract new clients find them. with your magnets. Yeah. I magnet. Yeah. Done yeah. it. Yeah, I get it. Wah, wah, wah. No, but that's great. That's that's great. That's guerrilla marketing is what that is. Have you ever heard of the term guerrilla marketing? It's like, yeah. you know, boots in the ground, being strategic without spending, you know, $4,000 in a mag- magazine article. Oh, no. I'm like, Tom, if you all. see any other magnets, you throw them away. <laughs> <laughs> put them in the garbage disposal and only I want I want to be the only magnet on that refrigerator in that put rental the house. Gar- magnets in the garbage disposal you'd have some mad uh, some mad homeowners then I don't think so mad at the other uh, photographers it worked <laughs> yeah. why did you put your <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> why did you put your own magnet in the garbage disposal yeah yep absolutely um, yeah, so there was one time when we were shooting a wedding this super sweet couple oh my gosh they're the sweetest and we were shooting a lot of memory cards. Memory cards were very expensive back then. I mean, this is and small, eight to ten years ago. I don't know, and small, like probably eight gig cards, maybe four, probably four gig or two gig cards. Actually, they're probably. Yeah, I shot on. I, sh- I shot on fours for sure. Yeah, I think there are four gig cards. So you'd you'd shoot. I don't know, three or four hundred photos, and then have to switch cards. Something like that. I forget. And so what I what I would do is I would sometimes I'm like I don't want to run out of memory cards in the middle of the ceremony because there's not a lot of time to switch out. So I would usually put a fresh memory card in for the ceremony and make sure it's good. And I had I had a friend of mine you know this friend I'm assuming I don't I'm wondering if I should say his name on the air. Maybe I maybe I won't say it. Um Let's just say he's now he's in Everland, uh, or Neverland. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got you. Yeah, I mean he probably wouldn't care. Uh, but anyways, we had this system where we—I don't have my memory card thing right here. We had the system where it's like when you shoot a memory card, you put it back in upside down, and so you know that. Amen. Not a shot. Still it's do like that. Kind of a universal mm-hmm. system. You put it back in upside down. That way you know. Do not shoot in this card. You need to download it. Okay. And what we did that day, yeah, there you go. Okay, so that one is upside down. Good card, spent card, good yeah. card. I can use this. I cannot use this. Look at those compact flashcards. What are those? What are those? I don't even know what that is. Um, it's not my fault you're using your Canon 5D Mark IV incorrectly. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, I had an assistant, a friend. He was just visiting, and he like came to uh, came with us on that wedding. I That's don't know friend. what I don't know what happened, but apparently when I took the the card out after the ceremony, he did not put it back in upside down. <gasps> and we shot the entire we shot over the entire ceremony card, and and um, and we didn't realize <gasps> later, and it was like a nightmare. I was like, oh my gosh! So I literally ruined every picture, and I'm the main camera angle for the ceremony. Fortunately, I had Thank a second. I had a second shooter, my wife Tammy, who's an amazing photographer, amazing at capturing moments. She got to be just an amazing wedding photographer, especially when it came to the candid, photojournalistic portraits, or uh, just photos throughout the day. She got killer photos of the whole ceremony. She didn't miss a single moment, and she was in a prime spot, and she a hundred percent redeemed the ceremony photos save the day save the day but i all the main photos of the bride walking down mm-hmm. seeing the groom mm. all those things like you know all the you know mother of the bride like all those things walking down all the photos that i had from the prime position were all deleted i think i recovered mm. like a couple of shots off that card because we did the recovery software and it was a nightmare. It's the only time I've ever really had that happen. And I, I was just like, I, I, I still don't, I still don't know exactly how or why. If it was my mistake, if it was my buddy's mistake. But we shot over a card on accident, and I was like, panicked, like, oh my gosh, it was a beautiful wedding. You can never recreate it, you know, blah blah. blah. But Tammy mm-hmm. got amazing photos of that. And then we just, my wife and I, felt so bad. We, 
we told the couple we like called like we wow. we, we, sent, we we got amazing photos like honestly like they weren't missing anything but we knew you know and we we wanted to be honest with them like hey we screwed this up so i called them i think maybe i, I can't remember if i called them or met them because they were in nashville one of the few nashville weddings we had and we told them and they were so they were like we had no idea like we love the photos like so it's no problem you know and they were so gracious about it i'm like thank you y'all are wonderful but even still we're going to hook you up with thousands of dollars of free albums because so we we gave them a couple thousand dollars of extra free stuff um and all those things so do not shoot over your memory cards in fact nowadays don't ever format a card at a wedding ever can i say that yeah that's probably a better idea yeah Yeah. like go to the go to the wedding with fresh cards that you do not have to format Mm. smart that's a better (laughs) that's a better idea it was I've, I've second I've, I've second shot for people where they're like they hand me a car to put my camera I'm like there's pictures on here and they're like oh just format it and I'm like are you sure they're like uh I think so yeah you I'm don't like have to... that's not a moment you want to think about it like you're about to shoot wedding pictures and you want to maybe I can format that card from the wedding yesterday maybe it's backed up maybe it's not no I use my cards and just gave it that's why I just give you so many cards right yeah <laughs> I need to I need to restock you with a couple cards. So here's what you can do: if you have like a camera like uh, with two card slots like this, there's a, this is the Canon 5D Mark IV, and the Canon EOS R5 that's coming out soon is going to have dual card slots. Are they both going to be SD cards? You know, SD cards, correct? Okay. Yes. Um, so this has two card slots. Okay. If you're watching this, you can see there's this one right here, which is the uh, SD. SD SD card, and then there's another compact flash card, which is the archaic, really big ones that you can slide in right there. You can double write. First of all, you should just buy a big enough memory card for the whole wedding, I think. Um, and if you- there's, a, there's actually a couple of schools of thoughts on that, but I agree with you. Yeah, I think you should just buy, I, if I was a wedding photographer, if I was still actively shooting weddings, I, obviously I was a wedding photographer back in the day, I would shoot with a two card slot camera and I would shoot redundant to those two card slots. You might think that it, d- it does make your camera go a little bit slower, but I don't care. No, no, um, no, there's, there's that, it's actually not true. Like I, I make fun of you a lot for shooting to that SD card slot. That is built to be a backup. Mm-hmm. No matter what you do, your camera will, will shoot faster to that CF card slot. That's what it's designed for. And then it backs up to the secondary card slot. So it actually goes through a buffer when you just shoot to an SD card. Uh, so your camera is as slow as it's gonna be shooting to an SD card. But that's what I do. I actually shoot large rolls on my primary card, CF, and then on my backup, I do um, JPEG. Or large? No, I I do small rolls, and I put like a two fifty six gig card in there, and I can usually do like ten weddings. So like, there's always pictures on that backup card, and it takes me mm-hmm. forever to fill it up. Gotcha. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I would shoot. If you can, if you're shooting weddings and if you're getting paid good money, you should invest in good equipment to shoot weddings, right? So I would shoot two card slots and have them back up to both. Whether you shoot small, like Rich was talking about, I probably would just shoot full on big ones to both, like the full large raw personally. Um, But then that way, if you have big enough cards, you have 128 gig card, 256 gig card, you never have to take the cards or open it. By the way, it's pretty much like watertight sealed, so it's like safer if you actually just leave the cards in there instead of exchanging out. There's more room for like dropping into the mud or all these different things. So just mm, leave. That happened at my wedding last weekend. The I wedding mean, I was in last weekend, I went to go leave. I, I changed out of my suit, and everybody has a flashlight, and they're like looking for a, a lost memory card. A lot like, you know, like when you take a CF uh, SD card out, it kind of bounces, it kind of pops out. Mm. The photographer had lost it. Luckily, they found it, and it was not my company. But that was like, I guarantee you, a really crappy like forty-five minutes of looking for a memory card because it was all the ceremony pictures and bridal pictures. That was the wedding that you were a best man in. Or was yep. That, oh gosh, but they got him. They got him. Yeah, they found it. He texted they me like him. an hour after I left. Like we found the card. I was like, Phew. Phew. Um, you can't you can't really be discreet looking for a memory card in the dark at the groom's house, oh like they're gosh. gonna know something's wrong. Oh my gosh! <laughs> when seven people, including like guests at your wedding, are looking for a little teeny black <laughs> SD card in the grass. Oh my gosh, man, that's tragic. Well, hey, a uh, couple couple things. We're gonna give away this uh, hard drive in just a couple minutes to one of you guys who shared this um, this live recording of the podcast, and. <clears throat> Um, I think we're also going to give away free two months 
to the photo mentorship. Should we do that? that? We'll perfect. pick one. One of you guys who shares this uh, free training is going to win a me- uh, not a memory card, but a, we should give away a memory card. But we said we said hard drive, so we'll do that. That's what we'll do. Hard, you can store you can store a lot more pictures. You know, uh, speaking of the, the photo mentorship, uh, let me tell you this story because I told it in the photo mentorship, and then you can tell people what the photo mentorship is. So I went live. Yeah. On Thursday or Friday, I do a segment called Tech Talk where people just ask me. I think I had over 130 questions asked to me, mm. and I answered them. Um, that was just that one time I went live. Mm. So much knowledge in my brain. But here's the story, David. I shot a wedding Cocky. for free. For free. Free wedding. Okay. It was my college roommate who were like not even friends anymore. Not because we're not friends, but because life happens and he moved on. Right. I shot his wedding for free. Um, I'm at home, the pictures are edited and I'm, I'm like rearranging and organizing files and something magical happened to where it was on an external drive and on my desktop. I went and moved the file from my desktop to a different external to back it up twice and the whole thing disappeared. Like it was gone from everywhere. The wedding was three week, three weeks old. So it was already off the cards so in a magic moment, that wedding disappeared from every backup I had. So I, in theory, I deleted a wedding before I delivered to the client. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What did you do? I called drives. I called drive savers. I tried a couple of software things and it was just like not working. Right. I called drive savers and she was like, take the battery out of your MacBook right now. It was like the pop MacBook pro battery. Oh yeah. I remember those. Yeah. <clears throat> so I popped the battery out and she's like, mail me your computer. I'll get the files back. And I'm like, are you sure this is a wedding? It's important. She's like, it's going to be expensive, but I'll get your files back. I mailed them my computer. They take apart my hard drive. Not like here. I like breaking things. Not like, uh, I just broke this hard drive. Not like take it apart like this. I'm out of focus. Hold on. But they actually physically take the discs apart. And they text me a picture. They actually email me back then. A picture of a guy in a clean suit holding up the bare disc of my hard drive with a thumbs up saying, we got your data. That's probably a stock image. <laughs> like They take it every time. But that's awesome. I don't know, that's but awesome. it, it was it was cool. It was twenty six hundred dollars yeah. from a free wedding. And David, you want to hear the worst part of this story? So I shot a wedding for free, got the pictures back for twenty six hundred dollars, and the couple was divorced thirteen months later. Oh my gosh! That's why I wouldn't be friends so, with that person anymore. <laughs> So to say, that's why I love the photo mentorship. I I specifically teach you and show you how I back stuff up so that you don't make stupid, idiotic mistakes like I made. Yeah. Oh, the yeah, photo that was mentorship. a really idiotic mistake. Just kidding. Oh, my God. Yeah, but that's why I love it. And that's why I like my job. Like doing the podcast is fun because we're talking to a lot of people. But like when I can help out Carol or somebody specifically when they ask me mm-hmm. a specific question, it's amazing and super like life giving to me to be able to help people out. Hmm. And I like it like when the staff, like I'm, I'm like the MacGyver, I'm like the weird tech nerd. Like if I can help you out by teaching you how to reprogram a button on your camera to act Talk as the nerdy button, to us. That's what I'm here for, David. That's right. That's right. Um, that's awesome. Well, it is awesome that we have the gift of large memory cards now, you know, like amen for cheap too. It's yeah, crazy. like this is a 64 gig. I probably would have shot an entire wedding on a 64 gig back in the day. Files are a little bit bigger now, so maybe you can still do it. You can still get away a 64 probably. unless you. How, 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 how many, many pictures? How many pictures did I take for your family the other night in 20 minutes? 1175. Oh my gosh! Um, the kids were screaming. I was just trying to make it happen. Okay, I got to be honest about something. We have, um, you know. Tammy, Tammy has a hard drive with a, with kind of like a bunch of our family photos on it. And she, that hard drive has been acting funky, you know, and we have the photos backed up, um, to a couple, to a couple of places, but they weren't really convenient. Like they were at my office and this weekend we were trying to like re get the photos off and I bought a brand new hard drive to kind of replace it. 
Anyways, it is so important because basically Tammy's hard drive is starting to screw up. It's even the one that I'm about to give away. It's one of the first times I've ever, because I bought like 10 of these, 11 of them. It's mechanical. It will break. Yeah, it will break eventually. So the hard drive we're about to give away, I'm actually having the first one. It hasn't failed yet. I can still get photos off of it and stuff, but it's it's starting to be a little bit funky and it's saying, hey, you need to reformat this hard drive, blah, blah, blah. But I don't know if I'll trust that one again. But basically, we've all had hard drives fail. I've had hard drives fail in the past. I just, it's the first time I've ever had one of these Seagate ones fail. But um, so but it was, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so thankful that we have the photos backed up. Okay, so thankful because uh, otherwise we'd be really freaked out, like you are, like you were. Oh, your wife, your wife would kill you, even though it's not your fault. Your wife would kill you as the husband for losing all those family memories. It would be my fault for not like for not backing up her photos, you know. Um, but yeah. what I realized is that my my backups of because it's a lot of photos. It's like three gigs worth of photos that's on her specific hard drive. Um, I have mm. them backed up in a couple of places. It's like, you know what? I need to do what I do for my professional shoots for her like personal family photos that she takes with her camera, with her 6D Mark II. And I need to just have the carbon copy backup. So basically, if you have one hard drive, it's not good enough. You need to have at least two copies minimum of your, of your photos. Um, I think identically backed up. And then your exported final JPEGs, I think you should back them up. They need to go in the cloud. They need to go in the cloud. So whether that's Google Drive, Dropbox, Google Photos. Amazon. Amazon. You need to back up your JPEGs, which are your your exported versions of your photos. You need to back back them up in the cloud. So anyways, hard drives, memory cards, they fail, they break, they're mechanical. So you need to make sure you're being smart and back them up. We, you know? The redundancies are right here. It's not in any of this. You just need to you need to be smarter than all these physical things. It's like saying I bought like a diesel truck. Yeah, it's going to last forever, but one day you're going to get to turn it on. It's going to break. If it's mechanical, it's going to break. Things happen. Stuff happens. Fires happen. Bad things happen. So just ha- like I'm, I agree with David completely. Two physical locations and on the cloud is how I back up everything. Yeah. Actually, I back up to the cloud twice because I'm extra nervous now. Because your head's in the clouds. Yeah. And like my wife's got so confusing that like I gave her her own system that doesn't interfere with mine. Like she has her own like iPhone backup system to where any phone picture she takes gets backed up to the iCloud and Amazon. So her iPhone pictures are in two places and on her phone no matter what. And I never have to worry about it. That's or smart. Get in I, th- I think we did that. We, we do that as well. We do two different places. And I'm not sure if we do Amazon. I think we do the Google. Drive. Amazon's free. If you're if you're an Amazon Prime member, it'll back up JPEGs, unlimited JPEGs for free. Well, we should do that as well. That way, that because my wife will. It's she's always yeah, like, it's, I don't it, know. It, it, like, it, you don't even know if it, it's do it. Does it all by itself? It's great. Yeah. Um, hey, this is a great question. Kristen Hoffman Hembray asked, "How long are you required to keep a copy after you've delivered them to the client? How long are you required?" I would require. It depends you, on your contract, honestly. Yeah, it does depend on your contract, but forget that. You should just have their photos backed up forever. Forever. You should just I say not. a year. I say a year on paper because life does happen. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, let's say my office burns down and my heart. I actually have a fireproof safe for my hard drives. That's how nerdy I, do I too, am. I do too, actually. Yeah. But like I say a year in my contract, but then I let my clients like I've had a I had a bride call me, man, last year crying. She said, I lost my my wedding pictures in a fire. And she's like crying on the phone. And as she's on there, I'm, I log on to my picture server host and I just reactivate her gallery. And I say, Go to that same link and hit download. All the pictures are there. And she was like so excited over something that seems so trivial when you have a house fire. Yeah. But it, a well click done. of a button, she got all of her pictures. And that, and that's and Kristen, that's exactly why I say I think you should just keep them forever. And so what I'm not saying is that you have to store their raw files forever. But here, here let's just be honest. Hard drives are cheap. The hard drive that we're going to mail to one of you guys in a few minutes is like 120 bucks. That's pretty cheap. Okay, and they're getting for cheaper. security, peace of mind. For security, heck yes. Okay, like your photos are the things. Like if a fire burns your house down, that's kind of the one of the one things you can't replace. They're family heirloom heirlooms. Okay, so memory. just it's a memory. Yeah, like here's the deal: if you shoot a wedding and it's 50 gigs, 100 gigs, I don't know, for a wedding, and you turn the photos over to your clients, the JPEGs are only going to be like maybe 10 gigs, something like that. If you that. can, if that, maybe five, three, probably two or three gigs. Back them up online in Google for free forever. 
So keep their keep their JPEGs, their final JPEGs online. That way you can do what Rich did, and when they have a fire, God forbid, uh, you can just be like, no problem, here's a link to your photos, okay? So don't delete them. If you really need to delete the raw files after a year or something, sure, but I don't think you should do that. I think you should just buy another hard drive. Yep. You know, because uh, they're not Especially that Especially because they're getting, they're, they're getting cheaper, man. Like, they're getting cheaper. A uh, $120, uh, like a, $120 yeah. hard drive a couple years ago was 500 gigs. Now it's 10 times that for the same price. Now it's yeah. 120 bucks for a five terabyte, which is 5,000 gigs. I remember spending $200 on a one terabyte hard drive, like 250 on a one terabyte hard drive. Yeah, and now you can get $120 for a five terabyte hard drive. So what I'm trying to say is like, just get a new hard drive every few, I mean, you know, you should have them double and then, backed up. And then when this one's full, you, you unplug it, put it somewhere. That's another backup that you're not even thinking about. 100%. Redundancies, baby. Redundancies, love it, love it. Hey, so we're gonna give away a free copy, a free copy. Um, a free digital membership to the photo mentorship. All right, the photo mentorship is our amazing membership uh, community. It's an amazing community. Um, let us know if you guys are actually in the photo mentorship. I know a bunch of you guys are on are online right now. I see Carol Fulton right there um, and Lori Cole. So you guys are awesome. Um, let us know if you guys are a TPM member. TPM stands for the photo mentorship. That's where you get to stream unlimited access to all of our courses and you get to uh, ask Rich and me and Brandon and Emily and Crystal uh, unlimited questions um, inside of our Facebook community group and unlimited questions on our site privately to our mentors. So basically- And, have a, and have a chance to win again. Like I'm gonna, we're gonna yeah, go live we two give, more times and give stuff away. Yeah, two more times this week and give stuff away, you know, cause we're doing a live on Wednesday and Thursday this week, right? We're starting actually a brand new series this week on uh, the iPhone Photography 101 and it's gonna be taught by me and hopefully Rich will tune, tune in for that. We haven't discussed that, but um, I think, are you gonna tune in with me for that? I use Android, is that okay? <laughs> Just kidding. Um. Um, yeah, we're gonna talk about iPhone photography, which is basically mobile photography, but specifically with you know iPhones. And um, it's gonna be awesome. So it's the iPhone Photography 101 Bootcamp. All this month, we're gonna have four sessions starting this Wednesday, so it's gonna be really exciting. But anyways, if you are a TPM member, and uh, then you're gonna get access to that live training. We answer questions, we're gonna give stuff away, um, and it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, and then we do Tech Talk with Rich on Thursday, and then next week will be a lot of fun as well. So I'm gonna give away two months free of the photo mentorship where you can stream unlimited access to our 25 courses in counting, ask unlimited questions to the mentors and attend our private trainings like the iPhone Photography Bootcamp um, that's exclusively reserved for TPM members. Do we have winners? What, what? Do we have a winner? We do, they're, they're in Slack. And I will, okay. there's actually five weeks of iPhone because there's five Wednesdays. Well, I only have four weeks planned, so we'll see. We'll see about that. Oh, uh, no. We'll do like a <laughs> critique. We'll, we'll do like everybody. We need to do more homework. Like I mm. I love watching our students like grow and learn and being like. When I we love say like homework, uh -huh. we mean like practice challenges and stuff, not like no, doldrum there's, homework. There's tests. It, like it, it reminds me of the SAT. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, it's all college. fun. It's all Let's fun. Talk about it. It's, it's all fun. I never even went to college, so, you know, there's that. Um, okay, we're going to give away. Do you have the winner? I don't have the winner pulled up. Yes, I do. What do you want to give away first? The hard drive or let's the photo give away, mentorship? Let's give away uh, the photo mentorship first. Okay, are you so ready? The winner, the winner of two months free of the photo mentorship. I don't know the name of this person. I, didn't, I don't have stock open. So the winner of two months free of the photo mentorship, our amazing membership community. All right. Hey, by the way, a bunch of, a bunch of people are like Carol is saying, courses and tutorials are amazing and lives and the lives are awesome. TPN has been a godsend. Awesome. Tom Andrews says, I'm a TPM member and it's great. Andrea saying she's a TPM member. Awesome. Vicky saying she's a TPM member. Fantastic. You guys are awesome. Uh, TPM member for two months. Love it so far, says Lori Laughlin. That's fantastic. Um, love it, Lori. Love it. You guys are amazing. Thank you all so much for being TPM members. Y'all are the best. TPM, let's be honest, TPM members are our favorite, right? I'll say that. TPM. Yeah, well, I mean, they, I know them. They're my buddies. Yeah. I'm, dude, like we're doing like an impromptu meeting like here sometime. Like there was, I'm grabbing coffee with somebody and they're like, well, I, maybe I can come down there too. So we're kind of doing like an impromptu meetup on accident because I'm you, so loved within the group. You know what I was thinking we should do? Um, I was actually thinking, I, I literally wrote it down this morning, uh, the photomentorship.com, sorry, it's a really ugly uh, 
it's an ugly font, but I just typed it in there. I'll come up with a better <laughs> font next time. <laughs> uh, thephotomentorship.com. Um, but anyways, thephotomentorship.com um, is where you'd go to sign up. And I'll let you guys have that link here in a second because we're about to give away. Hopefully, I, did I type that right? Photomentorship.com. Sometimes it's so stressful typing live on the air. Um, anyways, um, I think we should do a meetup exclusively for photo mentorship students, like a big one, like a weekend. You know what I mean? Like where we all go, like, cause we've done our workshops and they're fun. But what if we did like, instead of it being like, oh, David's gonna teach a workshop all day for three days straight and we're all exhausted. What if we just did like a really fun, I'm talking about this idea on air and I haven't talked to any of my teachers. I love it, like I'm in. But, How about but what if, just make us lattes all weekend? Yeah, like it'll be more of like a, a really fun hangout where we'll do like photo shoots and stuff and maybe do something, some, some, like we do so we go on like a landscape photography like kind of outing we maybe Adventure. hire some models yeah we maybe we hire some models and do some fun shoots but instead of it being like a workshop where we're just teaching the whole time it's more about like hanging out in community because that's the best part about the photo mentorship is the community and it's the camaraderie it's the feeling i think of come for the not, learning stay for the community yeah i think it's the feeling of not being alone of knowing that you're in good hands and uh, and it's a safe place to post your photos in <laughs> good hands I don't know what to do with my hands. So but anyways, the photo mentorship's awesome. So let's give it away. Let's give away two months free of the photo mentorship. The winner of two months is, you. hopefully you have the, the name of this. I do, I do, sir. The winner of two months of TPM is Teresa Sullivan. Teresa. Teresa Sullivan. You have won two months free of the photo mentorship. And you didn't even have to sell a van to get it. Sell a van, sell a van. Ah, I was like, I was like, sell a van i don't get it but okay all right all right well you're you're driving you were driving there you just were you're shifting gears into shifting gears into the next uh the next giveaway we're going to be giving away a free hard drive uh five terabyte seagate hard drive um and one out of 14 for me has failed so far so you need to make sure you back it up you know we'll talk (laughs) about this off air i have i have thoughts on this whole thing but i love you (laughs) okay all right the winner of a hard drive Five terabyte Seagate is Gerald Valicio. Gerald Valicio. Is that what you said? Mm-hmm. Okay. Vasello. Vasello. Sheila, Vasello. Sheila is asking if we can do it at the OBX. That would be awesome. Um, so Bro, we good. could do it at the Pine Island Lodge if it's like in the right time. I have friends there. This, this is a 28 bedroom house that has four living rooms. Mm, that sounds I've fun. done many a workshop. That's where I did the workshop, the lighting workshop with your sister where she was my model. Mm, mm. Sounds awesome. Well, we will talk about it and we'll get back with you guys, but that will be exclusively for TPM students. So if you're not a TPM student, you won't know about it. Sorry, sucker. Sorry. Sorry. So check it out, thephotomentorship.com and come join us for the iPhone Photography Bootcamp that starts this week on Wednesday and two days from now. Same time, kind of different place because it's only exclusively for the photo mentorship students. But you guys are awesome. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. Um, The next few weeks, you know what? I think we're going to be... Uh, telling a really, really cool story next week about how to start a business. And I think we're going to be day, inter- big day next interviewing week. a really, really awesome photographer. So I'm really excited about that. So we will see you next week. Happy 4th of July week to all of you guys, all of you, um, you know, members. Americans. Uh, citizen Americans. Well, it's not just America. I mean, <laughs> like South, fire. South, South America, Central America, they're all Americans. Even, you know, I was in Mexico getting schooled by uh, a tutor that I was having teaching me Spanish, and he was saying, we're the United States of America. He's like, we're the United States of Mexico in America. And I was like, oh, good point, you know, whatever. Okay. Anyways, they're all, por qué, por qué, why? Um, okay, so, yo digo. Yeah. Uh, to everyone celebrating their freedom this weekend, you guys are awesome. We love you. I love America. Guess um, what? And I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. I love you. You See you guys later. I love you.